On a toasty mid-August Sunday in mid-California, around midday, Hasty for Dowsey parked her electric BMW in the Camp Corinth staff lot. She jogged to the nearby director's residence to meet Oliver. He assigned Chick Cantera, Hasty, and a seasoned journey guide named Gloria to Sentinel House on the camp's southern edge. Then Oliver took Hasty to the cantina a Gold Rush-style log cabin where mail and snacks were dispersed. Outside, the red, white, and blue hung like a sweaty 4th of July polo shirt on the camp's 50-foot flagpole. The charter bus from the Bay Area honked as it entered the parking lot. Chick was the last bus rider to enter the cantina. He looked lost. A large army surplus pack filled absolutely to the bursting point dwarfed his 5'6", 130-pound frame. Oceaning him over to her spot at the table, Hasty showed him a neutral smile and said, Hi, I am Hasty for Dowsey. Let's get you registered. Name? Chick Cantera, he responded with a nod, but no hand. Good to meet you. Hasty scanned the registration sheet, found his name, and explained, Okay, Chick, you will be in Sentinel House, where Gloria and I are the journey guides. It's at the far southern end of the camp. With me so far? All the way. Why don't you look around for 15 minutes until I finish my shift? Hasty suggested with a bright smile on her full, severe lips. Then we can pack our gear over to Sentinel together. Outside the cantina, Chick took off his pack, sat on the ground, and leaned back against his gear. He watched a co-ed group playing frisbee golf on assembly field. Groggy after the long, hot bus ride, he dozed off for a few minutes. When Hasty came out, she stood in front of Chick. Even though she was an inch taller and ten pounds heavier, she debated whether to offer him help up. Then she put both hands where they could not be ignored and braced her legs. Chick took her hands at the wrist and popped up off the grass like a cat. Hasty helped him sling his pack onto his back and said, Follow me to my car so that I can get my stuff. Then I will show you the most highly scenic route to our cabin, okay? I presume you appreciate the highly scenic. Very much, Chick agreed, looking directly at her for longer than before. The black plastic frames of his glasses disappeared into the thick brown hair over his ears. Lead the way. Hasty hoisted her pack out of her car's trunk with ease. It was lighter than Chick's. She was an experienced packer. She led him west through an area of contemporary structures used as a conference center in the off-season. At a campfire meeting ring on the lakeshore, They turned south along a wide, well-worn trail through ancient cedars and firs behind the rustic cabins fronting Basswood Lake. To get him talking, Hasty asked, What do you want to get out of this week? I don't know, Chick said while shaking his head side to side. I've never been to a summer camp. I got a scholarship. I don't know why. Everybody here looks very preppy. I won't fit in here at all. Hasty assured him, Everybody at Camp Corinth is equal before Christ. Nobody here will have the slightest interest in me. Most kids who come here get a big takeaway even when they don't expect to. If you say so. Arching a broad, well-plucked eyebrow and pursing her lips as if to speak, Hasty remained silent. 
Everybody assigned to Sentinel Cabin stood in a circle at 1600 hours and introduced themselves. Hasty and Gloria gave brief remarks. Everybody got a copy of the ground rules. Hey, what do you think so far? Hasty asked Chick after the others were gone. I didn't expect so many women. Tilting her head and throwing a heavy braid of her dark brown hair back over her shoulder, Hasty said, When I was here as a camper, it was not co-ed. Oh, how's the internet service? Non-existent. If you want anybody to know about something, you better write them a postcard. Corinth spins it as a plus, since it supposedly helps us get serious about our business here. Uh-oh. It never occurred to me that they'd put a camp in a dead zone. When this camp was founded, the country was nothing but dead zones. And yet the people have prospered. Have they? Scrunching up his nose drew attention to the tiny blue stone in his right nostril. From there up to the bridge of his horn rims, his nose was broad and robust compared to the narrowness of his cheeks. Chick brushed back the hair on his forehead and took a deep breath. They left the cabin at an eager pace. Along the most direct route to Mona Lodge, Corinth's dining and meeting hall, Hasty pointed out additional indisputably pleasant features of the property. For the next four days, Chick and Hasty walked together between Sentinel House and Mona Lodge twice a day. After lunch on Wednesday, Hasty pulled him to a stop by his shirt tails, wiped the sweat off of her nose, and asked, don't you ever worry that you are too much of an outsider to be of much use to society? It was so quiet she thought she heard Chick's heart speed up. I am on the spectrum, Chick said, shrugging. He resumed walking. Why can't I be an insider and an outsider? Hasty was at a loss for words. The background briefing had said nothing about autism, but he did not seem to be joking. <laughs>